So, Michael, it's good to see you again. Good to talk to you as we uh, we talk Derry Championship football, is in, which is in full swing already. Last time we spoke, uh, Paddy McBrady put a light out on you in the last <laughs> of the game. So, it's good to be back talking football. But yeah, you boys had to refocus quickly, so you had to, to get back into the club scene. But listen, it's all going, Derry. Uh, there was a break last weekend, but the, the weekend uh, previous to that, there was a, a full round of games. There was eight matches in, in the senior championship, and they all went sort of according to form, Michael, bar one, where Lavi's defeat to Swatra was, I suppose, the big shock around one, was it? Uh, it definitely was. Um, Lavi had been going really well, playing a you know, a very exciting brand of football and they were on the cusp of winning the league um, but they conceded their last game to Newbridge um, you know, I think they were talking about injuries and different things but they conceded it and maybe they lost a bit of momentum going into the championship um, from watching the game, SWAT were full value for their win, Oshin McWilliams was excellent and uh, overall, you know they deserved it and it leaves Lavey playing a wee bit of catch up Oshin, it's as you know, it's not knockout, but the groups do help. Yeah. The further up you finish in your group, you know, potentially the better a, a knockout game you're going to have. So they're they're playing catch up now. Yeah, and they're in the same group as Slack Neil, the defending yeah. champions. Yeah, and they, and they meet this weekend, which which is definitely a, a big game for Lavi. Um, they met in the league actually quite recently, and Lavi bossed the first half um, and looked very impressive. Uh, and then Slack Neil turned the tables in the second half to win it. Um, but they're a team, you know, you saw them yourself, Austin, against Terman with, with the Miners. You know, they're coming with an, an exciting bunch of young players, but, you know, how, how quickly it takes to bed that into the real world of senior, I suppose, is, 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 the, is the place they find themselves now. Yeah, I suppose at times when you get a fantastic group of young men, that there's all of a sudden there's a very quick expectation of them, isn't there, Michael? Uh, there certainly is, and you know they they haven't just came with one team. They've been backing it up year after year, and they're back in the minor final again um, against Maher Felt. So, um, and you know the Lavi haven't won a championship since since nineteen eighty three, which is Boxing Day nineteen eighty three in the snow, and it's a long time for for a club like Lavi. So they'll be mad to get back to the top table. I feel they will get there, um, but. The Swatter game probably sets them back a wee bit in the fact that they're maybe lacking that wee bit of physicality around the middle that you know young younger teams don't have. But if they ever got their hands on that John McLaughlin Cup, I think they would get get their hands on a lot more. Well, they've got a real test ahead of them this weekend against the holders, uh, Slock Neil. As you say, they met in the league uh, recently, but this is this is championship football on bags going to be the venue for it. And if you really want to see where you are, Michael. There's no better way to test yourself against the, the boys who won the cup last year. Definitely not. And that's where I think that the Swatter game has, you know, tripped them up a wee bit. Because if they went into this game with a one under their belt, they would see themselves as, let's test Slant Neil and see actually where we are against them. But now it's nearly, you know, it's not the one, a must one game, but they'll finish third if they don't, if they don't win it. And that's as simple as that. But, um, Slant Neil are going fairly well during the league they didn't have all their players but the, and that was saw as a wee bit of a disadvantage because the, the split season model but the, the thing about Slant Neil is they've been playing together that long that it's nearly like flicking a switch again that they're all back together and it's a big big test for, for Lavi definitely but I, I, I feel Slant Neil will come through it yeah, there's a couple of other big games this weekend uh, as well. Um, before we look at those, who, who really are the sort of pretenders to the title of Neil? Who's there that can really take them on and give them a run towards then, Michael, do you think? I think Glenn, Glenn very much have been talked about. They've got, uh, I suppose it's been written and spoken about too, so many times how much, how much they've dominated underage, but they've got Malachi Rourke in as manager this year um, and he's brought Ryan Porter with him. And, you know, even in itself, that's a, that's a massive coup. They were in the final three years ago, which means they've been in the big day and and have been, you know, they've they've, they've tasted that defeat in, in in the big day. So that has to bring you on a wee bit more. They will be huge contenders. They're not they're not firing all cylinders at the minute, but 
to be fair, October is the real month when the championship starts, whenever it's real and somebody can get knocked out. Um, I think it's, you know, they're the two main contenders for me. Then you're into like Smaher, Felt, Lave, you know, Swatra, Loop, whoever can jockey themselves into a championship run. You know, that's that's the sort of the way it is. But um, and and in that too, I see Slant Neil as favourites at the moment. Yeah. But well, Glenn are playing uh, Bill Ray this coming weekend after an opening round victory against Balahi. But a couple of other standout ties, as as we said, uh, Balahi are playing host to Tamara Felt. Bit of a derby up there as well, so does in, in, in Group D. But there's a there's a lot can happen off the back of the result of this one, Michael. They can, um, because um, again, the positions the, the, the positions mean a lot towards the knockout side, side of things. Maher felt won the title two years ago, final last year. Uh, it's Adrian Cush's fourth season with them. They haven't been going well this year, um, but they've got a one under their belt. They beat Kilray, they probably could have won by more by all accounts. They missed a few goal chances and they haven't clicked. But if they can get a win over Balahi, um, it puts them back in the race again. Balahi played Glenn in the first game. Um, they struggled. They struggled around the middle. Uh, Glenn won all 11 of their kickouts and Glenn won half of Balahi. So Balahi were basically living in scraps. Um, from a Blahey point of view, they've won 21 championships. It's the most in Derry. But they haven't won a knockout championship game. They'll hit me saying this again, but they haven't won a knockout championship game since 2015, you know, for a club of that magnitude. So um, I'm sure that's something they'll be aiming for in October. Um, mm. and, and, and it means that if they could get a result against Maher Felt, it would, it would fair, uh, fair turn their season around, so it would. But I would have to say they had a consistent league they finished third in the league after getting by tanked by Balahi in the first round. So they have had a good, consistent season, Balahi. But um, this is a big test for them. Yeah. Well, other standout games. If somebody said to you a number of years ago that, that Newbridge would be beating Ballandary in the championship, um, as I said beforehand, we'd on the Sunday view, Michael, would be seen as a surprise. But it's it's not the case now. And Newbridge are looking to follow that up with an, another victory. They're playing Owen Rue Colrain uh, over the weekend and Owen Beg on Sunday afternoon. So there. I just touch on that game. I was at that game and. Um... Newbridge were comfortable. They always looked comfortable against Ballandary, I felt. Ballandary didn't score from play until stoppage time, um, which is not like Ballandary. They, when they were top dogs in Derry, they had a they had a forward line on the bench that would get on most senior teams. You know, that was how scary they were. But, you know, things have changed and they're very much in transition. Uh, Newbridge actually managed by Killian Conlon, a Ballandary man. He goes in against Coleraine and... Um, I watched Coleraine a couple of times this year, Oshin, and they took a couple of hammerings. And you're starting to wonder, are they on the wane? You know, they, their, their team's not getting any younger. But they were excellent against Banner. Larkin McMullen up front and Kieran McGoldrick were both excellent. And, you know, they put themselves back in the mix again, I would have to say. The Newbridge team is very, very young. Um, they've started to... They've started to get people back into the dairy scene again. Potty McGrogan, Connor Doherty from Newbridge, um, Mark Doherty, who was on the minor team. So they've done a lot of good work at their underage, getting players playing grade A underage football again. Um, and they're an exciting team. You talk about a team that's trying to make progress. You, you can fire Newbridge into that bracket as well. Um, and to beat Ballon Derry was a good result for them because last year they lost to Ballandary after extra time and an absolute epic. But if they were, if they could beat uh, Coleraine this weekend, which isn't beyond them by any matter of means, um, it would be a great, a great step in their development. Um, and I wouldn't rule it out. I actually put it down for a draw. I couldn't, I couldn't call it, uh, to be honest. Um, we interest in sideline that Newbridge. You know, when you're talking about the Niall Morgan factor and the Cluxon factor and the goalkeeper factor. They they put they they put their midfielder Nathan Rocks into goals um f for his kick out and uh, I think he I think he won all but three kickouts against Ballandary so um that's something that they feel 
they need to try and you know give them a wee bit of an advantage around the middle. Um, so again, I'm looking forward to that one. A draw. I, I don't know. I don't know where I changed my newspaper prediction now that we're that we're sitting talking about it. Um, but um, I'm looking forward to going to see it. Put it that way. Point or two either way. Still, still sitting on the fence. Yeah, well, that's another highlights to look forward to in the senior championship. Uh, what's the standout game in the intermediate this weekend, Michael? Um, I think it's uh, Drumshurn and Greenlock. Um, Drumshurn won the league uh, and played a played a great brand of football. Uh, I would have to say throughout. I saw them playing two or three times, uh, and Greenlock won the championship last year. Um, and Greenlock lost their midfielder Niall Bradley to a very serious knee injury. Um, but they have Niall Lachlan and Enda Lynn both back fit again. And they they brought in a young fella, Patrick Feeney, from Money Moore. He transferred to them, which gives them an extra attacking boost and Stephen Bradley. So they would probably be fancied again to come through an intermediate level. Uh, Steel's turn were beaten in the final last year, but this one was from Cern. Oshin would be, it'll be a good game and I wouldn't rule them out. I wouldn't rule out a meeting further down the line in a semi-final or a final. Um, in, the, in the previous round of the intermediate, there was a wee bit of a, I suppose there was a wee bit of a story where Derek Trasna didn't feel in uh, in the intermediate because of s- sort of player unavailability, unavailability and COVID and, and that type of thing, which means that in Derry, actually, you have three groups and the three winners go into the quarter final and the best runner up. And because of that concession, score difference goes out the window. And potentially the runner-up in that group could have a high score difference because they're playing uh, Glack and Derek, Hall, or sorry, Derek Trasna, teams that are in the junior level. So it hasn't gone down too well, you know, that that has happened. But the CCC don't really have any choice. You know, they can't really do anything else about it. So it's gone down to st- score average over the game. So uh, whoever wins this one here. Is definitely into the quarter final, and the thing about it is, actually, next year's next year's leagues depend on championship. Yeah. So if Drumshurn, if Drumshurn fail to make the quarter finals of the championship, they'll actually be relegated to junior football, despite winning the intermediate league. Right, and yeah. Greenlock could be the same. So, you know, that's an extra wee incentive for Drumshurn and Greenlock this weekend. Um, but. I probably think Green Lock will maybe come through it. Right, okay. Pivotal game for sure. Listen, uh, Michael, thanks for joining us as as always and uh, another busy weekend ahead for you. Just finally before I let you go, uh, what's the crowds been like at the Derry Championship? Because up pre up until pre COVID, Derry was renowned for having huge numbers of supporters at, at championship games at, at, at club level. Are they back yet, are they Michael? Are they coming out in their numbers? Ah, uh, there's good crowds at them, to be fair. There's been a there's been a decent Decent level of interest there always is in the club game in Derry, and uh, the game you know they they've streamed one game live every week, and the rest of them are up online. But no, there's a there's a good there's a good crowd out of all the games I've been at so far. Good stuff. Good to talk to you, Michael. Enjoy the weekend. Thanks, Oshie.